Good day fellow investors. This video will be about how investing usually works and how boring it is, how time consuming it is and how difficult it really is. Investing is not a walk in the park. It's not playing tennis with your peers. Investing is playing the US Open. And that's something I want to show you how usually you work hard to find nothing. But those that nothing is a small small milestone that compounds over time because investment knowledge compounds over time. Let me show you an interesting story about a very interesting stock that ended up being nothing. I spent six, seven hours to look, to read, to put the whole picture together to end up with nothing. And this will be a very interesting story for all of you who are your own investors, do it yourself investors to see, okay, this is what investing is, mostly a lot of work for nothing, but a great story and a small addition to the knowledge compounding that we do on this channel. The company is Global Ports Investments, which is a port management owned company in Russia. As you know, I have been researching stocks in Russia and I like to look at each one stock because I don't trust screeners. I need to know what those that look at the numbers, everybody's looking at the numbers, I need to go beyond the numbers, I need to go beyond the story. And this port operator in Russia is owned by Marsk, the biggest global shipping company. It's dealing with Vopak, a very big Dutch uh, tank operator globally again. So it looks legit, APM terminals owned by Marsk, 30% of the company, they have ports in the Baltic Basin and the Far Eastern port and the fundamentals don't look good at all. So those looking at screeners would say, oh, this is a terrible business, high price to book, uh, no dividend yield, uh, high price earnings ratio, even negative earnings over the last few years. And if you look deeper, you will see that the loss is due to the equity method accounting as they impaired Vopak EOS, the Estonian liquid terminal, as the Russians aren't doing business with Estonia that much, which leads to negative net income. So wouldn't come out in your screen as a cheap stock, but the free cash flow is extremely high. And this is what attracted me in the story. Okay, we have free cash flows of 300, 200, 150, 150 million US dollars on a market cap of 450 million US dollars. So that's a 33% free cash flow, free cash flow return, which would say, okay, this is a great investment. Then I'm looking, okay, what are they doing with the cash? And they say they are repaying debt. They're, they say in the presentation that net debt is 800 million and it was lowered by 500 million in the last five years. So, okay, I say if with 150 million in free cash flows, they pay debt for another three years, we are at 400 million, they, their interest rate is 8-9%, which would lead to cost of 40, 35 million. So 100 million in free cash flows. I could expect a dividend of 20% somewhere in the next 3-4 years, which would bring to a re-rating of the stock and everything as the stock is at all time lows. However, what they present in their presentation isn't really the case in reality because of a little trick. If I look at the balance sheet, the borrowings, long term 941 million, short term part of it 66. So the borrowings is still at 1 billion. And over the last five years, the borrowings didn't, if you look at the annual report of all, they didn't really go down by 500 million. They go went down by 150 200 million, so 30, 40 million per year. And why is that? Because in the debt repayment that they are doing, they are including on 1 billion, they have to pay 90 million in interest, and they are including that 90 million in interest per year into their debt repayment strategy. So it's not that they will repay 150 million of that, their debt per year, and then half half it practically in the next three years, start paying out dividends. They are paying 90 million per year in interest rates. So that's a cost and they are lowering their debt by 40 million per year. So it will take another 10 years with business as usual, with good businesses, no crisis in Russia, 
no rub rubble strengthening or something like that to repay their debt which means that we can expect only something good from this in 10 15 years which is not the rate of return I would expect and this is okay I really read through everything to the company to understand is there some potential is there something the market doesn't see no in this case the company was overvalued in the past the market now sees it really clearly and gives it a fair price for the risk for Russia so after six hours a morning looking at this you say simply no and then you continue with your list where the majority is no, 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 no. And perhaps here and there you find something to watch, put on your watch list, and then you invest in it, maybe at some point in time. And this is what all the great investors were doing. We discussed Warren Buffett's letters in a recent video. And while doing that, I was reading, he was also in the 60s, he was working through Christmas. Now we have more information. so. I don't really work through Christmas, but I work most of the time, most of the day. And I hope to do that for 10, 15 years, because if you want to be the best, you have to put in the best effort. You don't win the US Open by playing a little bit with your peers after work. You win it by dedicating 15, 20 years of your life, 10 hours a day training. And people underestimate that if you want to really win in the investing game, you have to do the same with investing the great ones dedicate that and that's what i'm doing and i'm very very happy that i can do it if you cannot invest a significant part of your time into investing then you have to think okay what are my what is my potential and what is my risk and where can that lead me because I get a lot of emails when what do you think about this junior miner about that junior miner about people that don't understand anything about mining how the cycle works what are the prices they just see a nice presentation a nice article somewhere and they think it is investable you really have to understand to go there and to get higher returns and that's something that's the main message of this video uh, invest by thinking okay what are my limits what are my risks what is the potential reward and what can i do in relation to that how much time am i, am I willing to invest into my investing a to become good to read books uh, and then accept the rate of return in relation to the time invested if you have absolutely no time index funds over the next 20 years, expect 4%, 4-5% per year. Okay, no time, invest in bonds, 3% inflation, minus 2, minus 3, so 1%. If you want to balance the risk between bonds and the stock market. If you have a little bit more time, okay, I'm going to find 20 good businesses and then focus on that portfolio, balance through that portfolio, learn about 20 easy businesses, Facebook, Kraft Heinz, uh, Beijing Capital Airport that we discussed, things like that. Okay, 7, 8% returns, we are now there. Perhaps something will be do better. Facebook has the potential. So if you really want to go double digits, 10, 15, 18, 20%, Buffett, Seth Klarman, Ray Dalio, then it is full time, five, 10 years to learn, and then you start compounding that knowledge. So just put things into perspective. Where are you? Let me know in the comments. Where are you? And whether your input time investing matches your investment return expectations. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.